You might imagine that the Muslim Brotherhood could at least rely on the support of serious clerics. You would be wrong. Sheikh Mohammed Yakoubi is a prominent Sunni scholar, a member of the Syrian ulema, the country's traditional religious authorities. This is his view of the Brotherhood. They are splitting the Muslim nation into two. The real representatives of Islam are the ulema, the scholars. We believe that the Muslim Brotherhood, that their goal is politics. Their goal is uh, power. And they are using Islam and they are doing a lot of harm and damage to the picture of Islam and to Muslims. And you never know when they're going to change. Now they're saying, OK, they accept democracy. Next day, they may say something different. An estimated three quarters of Syrians are Sunni Muslims. And the ulama could, if they'd been so minded, have provided a significant focus for opposition to the regime. The way the Assads neutralised that threat was less brutal than the technique used against the Brotherhood, but very effective nonetheless. There were carrots, big wage increases for mosque employees and plum jobs for preachers who towed the party line, and sticks too. Sheikh Yakubi is now living in exile. Let me give you the following example. Before the uprising, I delivered the speech and I was called to the political branch of the Secret Service for interrogation. And I called a friend who knows some officials there. So we got in the room, there was a paper handed over to me, write and sign that you never tackle any political subject on your Friday speeches, with a stern look and some really tough uh, words. I said, according to the instructions of the president himself, we have freedom to speak. Well, it took an hour of discussion. By the end, I said, I'm not going to sign. The man went in and out. My friend with me noticed that something was going on over the phone and they would take me to the basement now to arrest me if I don't sign it. My friend said, sign it. I signed it and said, well, I'm, I can sign hundreds of these statements, but if something needed to be said in my Friday speech to support people, I will say it and got out. This is one example of the pressure they exert on people. Those tactics didn't work with you, but from what you say, they did work with quite a it lot of did, scholars. It did work with many, of and course. the ulema has paid a price for that in the judgment of the people. You're right, absolutely right. Yeah, A lot of damage was done to the structure of Islam, Sunni Islam, moderate Islam, due to this uh, fact that people really were tempted in supporting the regime. Syria's most famous Sunni preacher, Sheikh al Bouti, was one of those tempted into supporting the regime. Indeed, he was among its most enthusiastic supporters and was said to be almost as familiar a face on Syrian television as the president himself. In March this year, the sheikh was assassinated, the moment of his death apparently captured on this video. No one knows for sure who did it, but there was widespread speculation that he was being punished for his views friend of the family. He studied under my father, had huge respect to my father. I had huge respect for him. We always objected to his support of the regime since 1980. But the regime actually succeeded in recruiting him, brainwashing him to the point that he believed that uh, the story of the regime was true. So he couldn't see that people really were oppressed and people rebelled just because, because of the oppression. Several scholars talked to him and he didn't change. And to be honest, he did the worst damage to the people themselves and to Sunni Islam. 